Hello and welcome to Charlie Adventures. In this video, we're going to be sharing our experience visiting Bali for the first time. We decided to stay in Ubud for four nights and then moved to Samanyak for two nights. Where to go, what to do, how to get there, what to eat. Stay tuned to find out how we did on this trip. Hello, welcome to Bali. Our first time here, so thanks for joining us. We just arrived uh, last night. We checked into our Airbnb and now we're going to go for a walk. We kept in touch with the host before our arrival and booked the airport transfer directly to the villa. This was super convenient because we didn't have to worry about arranging any other forms of transportation on our own. And of course, the driver knew exactly where to go without having to look for directions. We had brunch at this casual eatery with a cool vibe. Simply Social had a pretty extensive menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. After a nice brunch, we walked over to our first cultural destination, the Ubud Water Palace. The entrance was right next to Starbucks. Because this is a temple, we must put on a sarong in order to enter the grounds. When we did the research online, it said that there was no entrance fee, but once we got there, they charged 35,000 rupees each, which was just a few US dollars. Hello, Hello. welcome to the Ubud Water Palace. It's like this temple with all these water features. Lukoi. Since the temple was right next to Starbucks, we had to go in to check it out. They always have something different in every country. After the temple, we turned around the corner to this other street that was lined up with small shops. We also went across the street to check out this other art and souvenir market. Next, we started walking back towards our Airbnb and spent some time at this super awesome specialized tea house. The staff did this whole artistic explanation and demonstration of preparing and steeping the teas. Both of our tea choices were amazing. We absolutely enjoy this place. It was a heaven for tea lovers. Now it's time to head back to the Airbnb for our next event. Our host texted us through WhatsApp to let us know that they are ready for us, so we had to head back ASAP. Walking would take too long and it's still hot outside. So we decided to use Grab, which is an app for rideshare services like Uber and Lyft. The locals call it online taxis. Keep in mind though that some places like temples and touristy areas may not allow online taxis to drop off or pick up passengers. They have a preference for official taxis like the Bluebird taxis you see on the streets. Be sure to do your research ahead of time. Babes, what happened to our pool? <laughs> it's full of flowers. Look at this beautiful design. Wow. Is the water underneath? <laughs> okay, let's get ready and jump in. Mm -hmm. 
Look at this, guys. This is what three hours of prep gives you a flower pool. A lot of Airbnbs and private villas offer this flower pool addition, where they fill up your pool with fresh flowers with the design of your choice. Is it cold? It's okay, it's hot, so it's nice. I can't move now, I don't want to ruin it. I'm just going to stay here. Of course, this requires advanced communication with your host for them to make the arrangements. And the cost depends on your design because they will have to get different kinds of flowers to make it happen. <laughs> Whoa! They did the, poop, the tub too? Wow, yeah. look at that. I like this one. After all that fun in a pool filled with flowers, it was time for dinner. But remember our dilemma about walking or hitching a ride in the crazy traffic? We decided to rent a scooter. But first, we needed to get some gas. We had to fill up at a warung. A warung is a small family-owned business in the form of a small shop, eatery, or cafe. And these can be easily found just by driving around because they are everywhere. It's four o'clock in the morning and we got about a two hour drive ahead of us. We are heading to Thick Gates to Heaven Temple on the east side of the island. Uh, we're leaving early in order to beat the traffic and hopefully beat the crowd. So by the time we get there, it should be around 6 o'clock. The locals are already up super early in the morning and getting groceries for the day at the markets. We got here at 5.45 a.m. The parking lot is not full, but it's still quite a few people up here. Have you seen those Instagram posts of people doing yoga poses in front of this gate? Well, that's what we came to do. As you will soon see, it's quite a sight behind the scenes. Ready to walk? Since we came in the off season at the beginning of December, there weren't that many people. We were told that some had waited two to three hours to take pictures in front of this gate. That's how popular it got. Since we had some time to wait, this vendor approached us and offered traditional Balinese costumes for us to rent and wear for the photos. We thought that would be cool, so we decided to go for it. Their shop was just outside the temple grounds and they had many colors and patterns to choose from. The cost was 300,000 Indonesian rupees for both of our costumes, plus they would take some photos for us using our phones. This was about $20 US, which wasn't bad at all.
Now, those famous photos you see on the internet taken at this gate hinges on a tiny piece of accessory, a mirror placed just underneath your phone's camera lens. This gives it that water reflection effect. Who knew this simple piece of technology would attract people from all over the world to come visit this place just for that Instagram famous picture? You might have to wait a while, but the actual photo process only takes two to three minutes. Next one. You get four poses as a couple and four individual poses. Next one. We're at the Turta Ganga water park. Uh, this place used to be an emperor's house and it was open to the public in 1948. Right? Yeah, Emperor's and Palace. Emperor's Palace. So this is a very beautiful garden. this red banana. Have you seen a red banana before? Hey guys, we just uh, finished the uh, Gate of Heaven uh, temple and then we also went to the Water Palace. So now we're gonna have some breakfast with some traditional Indonesian food. And we invited our driver, Gus, with us. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. He's been uh, very nice at taking picture for us and drive us around. So we wanna treat him to a nice breakfast. So thank you. Next up is Kanto Lampo Waterfall. Originally, we only planned to go to the Gate of Heaven Temple early in the morning on one day and then to a different waterfall on another morning, but it was over an hour drive in a different direction, so we decided to go with the tour package offered by our Airbnb. Sometimes it helps to be flexible with your plans, but if you have activities which require advanced booking and reservations, then you need to plan around that. Kanto Lampo Waterfall. We noticed that many of the popular tourist places have staff to help you take pictures. Everywhere we go, so many people from around the world lack the common courtesy when it comes to things like this. So this helps with crowd control and avoid people fighting for their turn to take pictures, which is definitely a plus. Seeing how much traffic there was on our way back to the Airbnb, we wanted to wait a bit before going out again for the evening. The ride sharing app Grab also allows you to order takeout, which is kind of like Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Postmates. Look at that. Don't check inside. Okay, we're getting the ribs noodle barbecue and the chicken saute because it's the most ordered. Mm. Anything else? For, from this place. Bakso. Most ordered. Mmm, beef balls. The traffic was so bad coming back to the villa and uh, we decided to just grab something, literally, so that we don't have to ride up the scooter in that traffic. Grab. 
So, what do we have here? We have bok so, which is a beef ball noodle soup. Then we have chicken satay here and some barbecue ribs with fried noodles. Yummy, let's dig in. Yay. Remember those incense burning offerings we saw at the beginning of this video? Those are called Chanang Suri. They are daily offerings to Hindu God. They are everywhere, on the sidewalk, in front of the stores, at the entrance of a house, temples, and even on vehicle dashboards. Try not to step on them when you walk. We made our way to local night market because we love street food. This one here called Sayan Night Market was not far from our Airbnb and they had a nice variety of vendors. Welcome to the Sayan Night Market. Would you like some We recommend changing money ahead of time because in developing countries, most transactions are made with cash only. For this trip, we exchanged about $650 US and we got about 10 million Indonesian rupees, which lasted the entire trip for the two of us. The only things we charged to our credit card were the additional services offered by our Airbnb, a spa package, and some of the rides and takeout orders made through the Grab app. But with the rideshare apps like Grab and Gojek, they also have an option to pay with cash. We enjoyed our full day tour yesterday, so we decided to do another half day tour. We saw that this package includes one spot that we wanted to check out, and that fit perfectly with our modified plans. Day three, welcome to the coffee plantation and swing. So, I mean, last month, but this one is still young, so they don't have the card. Okay, so, this is part of this Arabica. So we grow like two types of coffee in Bali. So this is Arabica and beside you, this one, there is uh, Robusta. There. So you can see the difference from the leaf. Robusta is quite bigger. And Arabica is a bit more smaller. But we grow a lot of Arabica here because it's quality. Even the taste Arabica coffee, more people like it. It's not stronger, less bitter. I think fruit, so they eat any fruit. But especially when the bean is turning red, we have like sweet aroma so they can smell the aroma. Selected the bean coffee, which one is the good one, they like it. And then it's really clever. It doesn't want to eat the bean, they only want to chew the part of the skin inside. Oh. Yeah. So the skin, they have sweet flavor, they only want the sweet flavor. And the bean, they just swallow the bean. So after the bean is swallowed, they have process fermentation. Oh. It's not really like poo, but they look like coffee bean come back. Oh. They can't digest them. Oh, okay. So this every morning the people collect the poo in the wild because in the animal, in the jungle, it's a free. It's, we not use the animal and the cages. We're just removing the shell coffee. Um. This is the bean that we take inside. And then this bean coffee is a before, dry, a before roasting. It doesn't have taste. So we need to roast it. Uh -huh. And then we need to dry it first three until four days under the sun to get the loose all the water inside of the bean. And then we're ready to roast. I'm making coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm roasting coffee. Roasting coffee. Cappuccino coffee. This is 
one is from the poop. <laughs> Exercise. <laughs> I'm grounding coffee. Oh, it smells good. The barley we didn't grow tea, but we have uh, some herb we use herbal tea. We call it like, ginger, mm -hmm. but it's very good for you. It's a turmeric. It's good for anti inflammatory. Mm -hmm. We have lemongrass, we smell. And this is cinnamon, but cinnamon is still not processed. It's not good. And this is like mango steam. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, so before we doesn't know the vinegar, we just throw the skin after we eat the food. But now we're using the skin for our taste. After a quick tour at this small plantation, we took some pictures with the beautiful scenery in the background. Then we got to sample a few different coffees and teas. What did you get? A ginseng. Ginseng? Ginseng. Yeah. So, what did you try? This? Yeah. <laughs> That's ginseng, your favorite? Yes. We really enjoyed some of the teas that we sampled, so we bought some as souvenirs and to support the local business. Now we're heading to a popular rice terrace. Rice it's really convenient for private villas to provide these tour packages because you get your own driver for the day waiting on you. You don't have to worry about organizing transportation to and from places, negotiating prices, or risk drivers not showing up or being late. Our driver was very friendly and he sort of became a photographer. For lunch, our driver took us to this restaurant with the beautiful rice field scenery. After we got back to the villa, we rested up for a bit and headed out again. We stopped by this cool cafe for a quick pick-me-up coffee and snack. For dinner, we took the scooter out for a ride to another night market a little further out. We just can't get enough of local street food. I love night markets.
Good morning, everyone. This is our last day in Ubud, and this is our Airbnb host, Diwa, and he's cooking breakfast for us this morning. Let's go check out what he's making. Good morning, Diwa. Good morning. Thank you for cooking for us. We have a beautiful place. Okay. Hi, good morning. So this morning we have a traditional Balinese breakfast uh, on this floating tray. So here we have the nasi gareng and then we have the mi gareng and some tropical fruits, with watermelon smoothie, coffee and tea. Come enjoy with us. Overall, we really enjoyed our stay at this private villa. The staff is friendly and accommodating, and we were glad that they offered additional services. Not sure if they're allowed to advertise this on Airbnb, but some advance notice would have helped with planning the trip. Once we settled our Belgian checkout, we got transferred to our next destination, Seminyak. For the next two nights, we booked a hotel close to the heart of the city, but not directly in it to avoid all the noise. Hey guys, we just uh, checked out of the Airbnb in Ubud and we got transferred into Seminyak on the west side of Bali. Uh, we just checked in into a hotel and a loft and then uh, rested up a little bit and now we're up here for a walk. Breakfast was included with our hotel, and they had a good variety of Indonesian and international food choices. During our research about how to get around in Bali, many internet articles and travel blogs recommend that you rent a scooter. We've seen how difficult and time-consuming it can be to get anywhere on this island, so we decided to give it a shot. 
we rented our scooter from Bikago and we chose something that was a little bit heavier with more power which helps with safety and stability. You can rent daily, weekly or even monthly and it's very affordable. Just make sure you rent from a reputable company with good reviews so you don't run the risk of getting scammed. That's nice, but you are slow. <laughs> These roads are smaller. Yeah. Remember on the way here, the, some cars have to get on the sidewalk mm -hmm. to let the other cars through? Yeah. That one side kind of just takes over, like they're just coming in the middle. So then you have to do it. Crazy! Yeah, so you can. We booked this awesome full body spa treatment. Now it's time to put the cameras and phones away and relax for the next three hours. After lunch, we walked around to explore the area. With a scooter, you would not get stuck in traffic as much as with a car. You can park pretty much anywhere, go wherever you want, whenever you want, no need to wait for a taxi or ride share service. It was our first time driving a scooter, but it wasn't difficult to learn. Of course, it takes some getting used to, especially having a passenger, the riding dynamics are a little bit different than if you're riding by yourself. Driving in this crazy traffic with other motorists very close to you can be very nerve-wracking. But we noticed that everyone is very courteous and others seem to do a very good job at giving you space and going around you. Let's go shop for some souvenirs. 
Now this is your one-stop shop at some very reasonably priced souvenirs. I mean, look at this place. It's like a Costco warehouse in here. You can find pretty much any kind of gifts. We used Grab one last time to get a ride to the airport. We made sure to book our car big enough to fit all of our luggages. Well, this is it guys, our last trip of 2023. We had lots of fun traveling and we hope to keep producing more adventure content on this channel. We appreciate all of you supporting us by liking our videos, commenting, subscribing, and sharing our videos with friends and family. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next year.